support the application based on the impact that uh, that it will have uh, on parking uh, and traffic movements in the area.
as well as scenario and that part of the area, which is why this implementation will come to in this application. Can I just, I know, I know it's not normal. Yeah, oh, sorry, because that's a technical class of today, no. Uh, um, uh, we've seen that then. Okay, so David. I'm not catching up with any specific question to the officers. Is there, are there any grounds for turning this application down on the grounds of inadequate car parking? I mean, that's a yes or no, well done, no question. Is that correct? Thank you, through you, Chair. Clearly, it is an option open to members to refuse the application on the basis of cumulative impact um, because of the displaced parking. However, the Council clearly has a policy, SPD4, which ties the Council into making decisions. And I, I know members don't like me going on about appeals and the potential for cost awards, but recent recent um, guidance released from the Department of Communities and Local Government issued on the 6th of March this year, so it is very recent, is very clear that where councils have got policies in place, they should abide by those policies, and where they don't abide by those policies, then it does leave the council open to a cost award. Now, the, this isn't the correct time to revisit SPD4. That will be done as part of the local development framework process, the core strategy, um, and there are several um, new and amended um, supplementary planning documents proposed as part of that process. But this application isn't to revisit what's in SPD4, um, and SPD4 should be applied um, to this application. So my advice to you, and it is only advice to members, is that no, there are no um, grounds that could be upheld uh, for refusing this application on parking or highway safety grounds. I think, sorry Chair, if I could just comment, I think the residents will be less concerned about whether the council is going to be charged with some fee for having refused it than they are about the impact on the car parking in the area, but I understand and appreciate where you're coming from and in accordance with our current policy, we couldn't sustain no probability uh, a refusal on the ground that uh, it would contradict our own parking policy. And so until that parking policy is changed, which as you say may be the subject of the future core strategy, there's no real ground that we've got for evaluating a reason for refusal that couldn't sustain it on the field. I think everybody needs to appreciate that. You know, I'm very concerned about it because I totally understand what Fat Last and the, uh, the, the objectors are concerned about. I wouldn't want to live in an area like that where car parking was, you know, it was left of the draw as a result of a lottery where you could park or not. But it sounds, taking Matthew's advice from a legal perspective, as though there's very little we can do to do about it, to do about it because if we didn't refuse it, it would go to a fee and it would immediately overturn. Whether or not we get to levy costs of that is not really my major concern. My greater concern is the fact that that would overturn a, a, a refusal, that everybody would go away from here and think, oh, great, we've got a refuse. And then in six weeks, it would be told, no, it wasn't because it wasn't a valid reason for refusal. So I think we have to bear that in mind before we make any decisions here tonight. Okay, we're getting the light about Phil. Very briefly then, if it gets overturned on the um, will it then be a savings for the The officer's recommendation is that we approve this. Um, I need somebody to recommend it and somebody who will second it. <laughs> Okay, well, I, because I'm the chair and because I understand the policy of the council, I'm going to recommend it, okay? Purely, purely because of the situation that we find ourselves in and for no other reason, because we know that if it goes to appeal, we've been told that that will be overturned and this will be built anyway. So I, with that in mind, I'm going to recommend approval. So we still have to go to a second and we still have to go to a vote. So is anybody going to second? <laughs> okay, so now we've got a situation where reluctantly we have a proposal and we have a second, but very reluctantly. So it's going to go to the vote. So all those in favour, can you please share? Is 
one's face in the back. The people in the in Steam U behind it are going to have a, quite a monstrous sort of um, development, two stories that I write in front of them. And I would just think that it's, <coughs> and you, some of you were there, I would, you, you, would, you would just think that uh, it's out of keeping with the character of the area. It's also very, very large for the size, extremely large for the size. So I'm just really asking if you would refuse them the application. Maybe they can come back with a smaller suggested development. Um, the objective I see given 29 reasons if you read it, uh, 29 reasons for refusal. And most of them, of course, not as David Elson has said on the last one, most of them are not planning issues. But two or three of them are, and the main one as far as concern is that it's too big for the site, the scale and the design are not appropriate for the site. And that's all I have to say, that's why I've asked you to say something about rejecting it. Thank you very much. Thanks, Joe. Okay, over to the Thank you, Chair. Uh, this application is to replace an existing telecommunications mast, which is situated on the verge of the public house. The existing mast is a monocoil mast and is 14.8 metres high. It's approved in 2010 and includes two equipment cabinets and a litre box on the verge next to it. The current proposals are to upgrade the shared mast to accommodate changes in technology to facilitate the faster 4G network. Uh, this necessitates a larger mast which is up to 17 and a half metres high, so that's an increase from 2.7 metres, to house the, the larger upgraded antenna that's shared by the, the two companies. The mast is still a monocle, and it'll still be grey coloured if you keep the, the mast that's there at the moment. It's a little wider in diameter. At the moment, it's, the mast is 0.2 metres in diameter. It would go to 0.3 metres, uh, extending to a, a big shroud at the top, which would be 0.5 metres across um, in diameter. Um, the plan policy framework and the 2013 code of practice for telecommunication operators supports the development of high speed broadband technology. Operators are sequentially guided to sites where there are existing masts to reuse existing masts in base station stations, even if this could result in a slightly larger mast. The application is accompanied by the necessary certifications, certifications which confirms the exposure levels are within acceptable levels. 
The proposals make no change to the final version of the appointment cabinet and the veto box all the works within that to take place within those structures. Um, the existing and proposed map, the first go to that map, have a fairly large public house on a main transport route. The increase in size is not considered to be visually significant um, given the size of the existing map. Um, we don't feel it will have to culture the slide and more will significantly be somewhat further than it is recommended for approval and is called by petition. Thank you very much. And I presume with the representative of the petitioners. Yeah, okay. Um, would you like to just introduce yourself then and then you've got your five minutes. Thank yeah, you. Sure. So my name is uh, Keith Evans, I represent if you just, just a little silver button at the bottom, if you press the little silver button, then right up there. That's it, yeah, hear me? Okay. Uh, Keith Evans, I represent the residents of Mells, and in particular, I live in Banks Avenue, which is the road opposite the pub and the set mast. Um, so, I just wanted to point out before I start that um, in the notes that uh, were incorporated from the agenda today, uh, it notes that there was one objection and one petition. Um, in fact, there were two formal objections. Uh, in addition to that, two councillors have also objected to this application. And I just wanted to remind the committee that going back to the original application, there was a petition of 100 signatories to, uh, to object, and, and that seemed to be ignored at the time, but I just wanted to point that out. Um, the residents of Mells are not opposed to, uh, obviously, technology, innovation and advancement. We all use mobile phones, um, that's not the challenge here. Our objection is to the location of not just the new mast, but the existing mast. Um, we believe that it is totally in the wrong location and does not fit into the surrounding area. Um, I don't know whether the committee have been able to see the signs, but just where the word Mel's is located, that is indeed a park. Um, and the pub opposite the said mast is the fifth busiest pub in the UK um, and has a garden outside in front. So between the mast and the pub, there is a garden area where uh, patrons sit outside to, to drink and eat, particularly in the summer. Um, our objection is based on the interpretation of the policy um, and the two key points are to keep mobile mass to a minimum and the environmental impact um, of, of MELS in this particular case. Uh, so our understanding is fundamentally different to the way that it's been interpreted. Um, from an environmental point of view, um, I would challenge, or we would challenge, is this the best location? Um, in a 10 metre radius of the mast, there's a park, there's a busy pub, and there is a densely populated residential area, as you can see from the map on this, the screen. I'd also draw your attention to the rationale to the approval of the last application. It was suggested that the mast would blend in with the environment. Uh, again, we would dispute that. Um, particularly in view of the boxes that um, are built in conjunction with the mast itself. Uh, and again, if anybody has seen the sign, they will appreciate that. Um, it's a bit like a fox in sheep's clothing. You can't get away from the fact that it is a mobile mast. Um, there is also another mast within 200 yards. Sorry, within 200 yards. So there is a point to that if you, if you don't mind me coming to it. So we also appreciate that part of policy that there is an opportunity for shared mast location. And whilst there is a mast within 200 yards, we believe that there is an opportunity to re relocate this new mast to join the site of that, of that other mobile mast in this case. Um, I understand this is a planning meeting and there is no reflection on health issues. I just wanted to note, um, if it's okay with the Chair, that I have written also to Ashton McVeigh on the grounds of the Steward Report and asked her to comment on the recommendations that are being made within that report too. Um, I also quite flabbergasted 
whilst obtaining the latest round of signatures for the petition, 